So Qualcomm has announced the Snapdragon 8 Elite, and I have a video about that here on this channel. And following that announcement, various smartphone manufacturers have started to announce their products that will use the new Snapdragon processor. In particular, for this video, we're going to be concentrating on the Realme GT7 Pro. Now, me and my colleagues over at Randor Authority have done some testing of this. We've got some numbers, and I'd like to compare the new Snapdragon 8 Elite in that Realme phone with some other Snapdragon phones from last year and also against the iPhone 16 Pro, not only for peak performance, not only for GPU performance, but also for sustained performance. What happens when you run uh, the test once, twice, three, five times and so on. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so to look at the Snapdragon 8 Elite benchmarks, we are using the Realme GT7 Pro. And in this first part of the video, I'm gonna compare it to the previous generation. So it's the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So I'm using the Xiaomi 14 Ultra and the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra to show the uh, results, show the difference in the benchmarks. And these are all devices that we've had in our hand. My friends and colleagues at Android Authority have had them in their hand, tested them out. These are the numbers. So Geekbench 6, let's start off. Multi-core, we can see here a score of 9,143 for the uh, Realme GT7 Pro with the Snapdragon 8 Elite. And then we can see the 7,078 and 6,102 for the other phone. So that is basically a 29% increase in performance for multi-core score over the previous generation. So that's a big number, almost 30% faster. And we come down to the single score, we can see 3,011 compared to around 2,200, 2,300 for the previous phone. So again, a 31% increase in single threaded score. So 30% across the board here from the Snapdragon uh, 8 Gen 3 to the Snapdragon 8 Elite. So that is pretty impressive. Now, when it comes to the graphics, of course, because there's a new GPU in the Snapdragon 8 Elite, we've got three different tests here. The Solar Bay Ray Tracing Test, the Wildlife and Wildlife Extreme Tests. These all come from 3 d Mark, And as you can see very clearly, big improvements uh, across the scores for the uh, new processor. So that's a 26% increase in performance for the ray tracing, 27% for Wildlife Extreme and 29% for Wildlife. So here we can see you're looking at plus 25%, almost 30% increase in performance for ray tracing and for normal 3D graphics. So again, big improvements across the board here. Of course, it's important to look at the stress testing. What happens when you run Wildlife Extreme, not just once when you get the peak performance, but twice, three times, 10 times, 20 times. What do you get? Well, this is the graph showing the performance after each iteration. So we can see here 6,563 for the first iteration on the Realme GT7 Pro. And then after nine runs, you can see the performance has been dropping off and this is perfectly normal. All phones do it, including the iPhone as well, which we will look at in a moment. It's because of what's called thermal throttling. So the processor heats up as it's being pushed harder and harder. That heat is dissipated through the case, but eventually the processor has to slow down a bit because it can't keep allowing it to run at such a high temperature. So it reduces the performance a bit. So we can see here it drops down after nine runs. It's got down to a level of 4,380, which by the time it gets to the end, I mean, it drops down by one third. So 33% decrease in performance over 20 runs. So really this second half here is the true performance if you're mobile gaming for a long time. If you're playing a game that you like to play, get through lots and lots of levels, hit 3D heavy game, we're not talking about solitaire here, then that's what you're going to get. After a while, this is the true performance for a sustained uh, point of view. Now compare that to the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Already we can see a big difference in the peak performance 
that is uh, because of the new GPU. But as we get down, as it starts to throttle again, this drops down to 4,115. So you can see here, as you would hope, that even when it has throttled down to its lowest performance because of the thermals, obviously the new chip is faster. And again, this one drops down by 40% over the lifetime of all these runs. So we can see here higher performance all the way along and in fact a less of a decrease in the performance as you go along. So again, brilliant numbers here. So that was comparing against the Snapdragon 8 uh, Gen 3 on Android. What do we get if we compare this new chip with the uh, latest iPhone, the iPhone 16 Pro? So back to Geekbench, we can see here that the multi core score is higher for the uh, Realme GT7 Pro. That's the, the second bar here now, 9,143. So it's 11% faster than the iPhone 16 Pro. On the single uh, core score, the iPhone is still the champion. So 3,354 compared to 3,011. So 11% faster uh, on the single core. And of course it's worth just remembering that on the multi-core score there, the uh, Snapdragon 8 Elite is an octa-core processor. The iPhone is a hexa-core processor. Uh, and the single threaded uh, score is higher by 11% uh, on the iPhone. When it comes to graphics, though, we can see the domination here of the uh, Snapdragon. Uh, the ray tracing here, 11,570. That's the score from the Solar Bay uh, benchmark compared to 8,192. That's a 41% different so 41 percent faster uh, the from the uh, gt7 pro when it comes to wildlife extreme we can see uh, 39 percent faster the other one doesn't matter because on the iphone it's limited it fixes it exactly here at 10,000, so it doesn't get a chance to show what it's capable of however that isn't true of extreme so when you look at ray tracing and wildlife extreme we're looking around 40 percent increase in performance on the Realme GT7 Pro. And what about sustained performance? All very well having your fast iPhone or having your fast Realme GT7 Pro, but how do they do? Well, so here is the numbers we can see already. We've had that when we saw on the previous graph for the uh, Realme GT7 Pro. We know how that graph goes. Let's compare this now to the iPhone graph. Interesting, different shape. Here you've got a drop down very quickly from the second run. So it has that peak performance and then it drops down and then it very much is a plateau. The uh, Snapdragon 8 Elite takes much, much longer to go down here. What does that mean in real terms? That means real terms, if you're playing a 3D intensive game for just a few minutes while you're you know waiting for someone or you're just you know waiting for a bus or whatever it is that you're doing you're going to get higher performance for those few minutes if you do them play long long term then both of them do plateau out so you can see here this drop from 4694 to 3369 and by the end of the test run that's a 34 percent decrease so both of them do decrease by about the same amount over a long run however the iphone drops off pretty quickly so when we talk about peak performance for the iphone it really is peak it's that one shot here's a peak performance and then it's going to crash down with the snapdragon 8 elite it is going to go down the same but it takes much much longer till it gets to this middle point here around 9 10 test runs interestingly enough that the difference between the two at this point here is 30 percent so when so not the difference here not the difference here but the here once they've both plateaued you're looking at 30 percent so even when you're running them both uh heavily at the end of the day, you're going to get a sustained 30% better graphics on the Snapdragon 8 Elite. Okay, so those are the results for the Realme GT7 Pro with the Snapdragon 8 Elite. One quick caveat to mention here at the end. Some of the tests during the sustained performance test, where it's repeated many, many times, did get killed off by the smartphone before they completed probably some whitelist battery saving thing, not exactly sure. When we switched to using benchmarks with a hidden name, so they couldn't see the name of the benchmark, right? they ran all the way through to completion. However, if you do go back to look at that graph, you can see the temperature does keep rising towards the end there, even though it hasn't thermal throttle anymore. 
just to make sure you have the full picture. Okay, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are of the performance of the Snapdragon 8 Elite compared to the iPhone when it's for sustained performance. Tell me what do you think, what do you think about it? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Well, my name is Gary Sims, this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, stick around, subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.